Welcome back to WND Tech. Today we are going to be focusing on something that we haven't done a video on in about four years now. The previous video that we did four years ago was about fans and guess what today we're going to be looking at some fans. More specifically some moonlight fans from Easy DIY Fab. Okay, so before we show you what the fans are actually going to be like with regards to noise and we'll show you a basic airflow testing using a bit of paper or something or smoke or something like that. That's about as far as we can go in this particular test. We have opened this box before. Now this is the box it comes in. Nothing fancy really. Uh, just says, is that Zeddy or Easy? Oh, I've got it upside down. Easy on the box there. That's their logo. Nothing really spectacular. It's just a box. Now we ordered this one ourselves. This isn't a sponsored video, um, as did I say? I don't know if I said that already, but it's not a sponsored video. So let's just go through what you get in the box. Now you get a quick, a basic manual here, and it kind of tells you how to plug it in, but we're gonna kind of show you that anyway. And uh, yeah, you can't really go wrong. And from what I can see, it's in many different languages because uh, they are based in China, I believe. And yeah, there's English on there and other languages as well, but it's very, very basic, uh, but you might need a magnifying glass to read the writing on that. It's a little bit small, but I think we can forgive them for that. They're trying to save costs. Now, let's move on to the fans themselves because that is the next step. We have taken them out, as I've already said, so it's a bit of a mess, and this isn't how you will find yours packed in the box, so just bear that in mind we've just put this back in here for the video so we've gone for the moonlight fans now these are white because the case behind me from a previous video as well they're going to be going in this build because uh, we just want to put white fans in it it's a white case a white and rose gold case now you can go and check that video out up in the corner if you want to see the progress we made or the process we went through to build that that took two videos to do so uh, yeah, we're gonna be putting white fans in it instead of the current black ones in there. Now these are the fans themselves. We're gonna get them all out and then I'll show you an individual fan. This is the fan pack of five. Now they do six fan packs. They do uh, a pack of six fans, but not PWM fans for some reason. Uh, well, actually I know why that is. And that is what's in this box here. In the little box inside the big box is the controller and the cables and the screws for the fans. You get screws for all five fans and a controller, which we will go through in a moment. We'll open that up. And you get the RGB cables there because this is motherboard sync, RGB sync compatible. So you can plug it into your motherboard and control all the RGB on these fans from your software that you use whether that be Signal RGB or any motherboard software that comes with your particular system. And obviously we get a ton of fans, uh, fans of screws. We get a ton of screws because uh, you can't put them in your case without screws. So that's a good thing. And it's good that they do supply those. So one bag per fan. Okay, so let's go through some of the other bags that are in there. I haven't actually opened these yet, so this will be new to me, but I kind of know what's in these already. Now, in this one is the RGB motherboard sync cable. What do they actually call it? Uh, the It says four gigabyte motherboard only. So that will be a specific cable for gigabyte. It's a specific cable. It literally says on there, I don't know if you can see that, four gigabyte motherboard only now i highly suggest you read the manual that comes with there which if we just pick that up on there there is i don't know if the camera can focus on that it tells you what pins uh what motherboard types you can and you cannot plug it into so four pin is a big no-no do not plug these into a four pin rgb header it will destroy the rgb on the fan so do not do that basically anything with these ticks on there you can plug it in so as you can see there hopefully gigabyte asus and that is what does that one say uh msi and also gigabyte again there they've got gigabyte twice for some reason interesting anyway those are the ones it supports and we'll put them up on the screen so you can see them 
as well. Going back to the cable, the end, this end will plug into the controller, which we'll get to in a moment. So actually we'll do that now. So this is the controller and this is where all the cables will plug into if you want to use this and we'll get into that in a bit. This will take the fan headers there. This is PWM controlled fan headers. So four pin for each of the fans. So five, there's five ports there. And then on the other side of this, you've got the ARGB, the free pin or the five volt. Yes, five volt ARGB header free pin, as you can see there not four pin don't plug them into a four pin as i said they will kill the rgb so yeah that is for that and then this is controlled amazingly they actually listen they're using sata power now how many controllers i've seen that still use molex connector on things like this is just beyond me but it's good to see that they've actually gone with sata power connectors on this so that's really good to see good job uh, easy DOI, well done. And we've got a reset switch button that goes there. So if you don't have a motherboard that's compatible with RGB sync, then you can plug your reset switch into that two pin header on there. And then you can press the reset button if your case has one and you can change the modes, uh, the RGB modes for the fans. This one here will be for the motherboard sync. Now there are two, is there two different types of cables we got here? Uh, yes, we have, we've got two different types. So specifically this one is for uh, Gigabyte. That's the one we just looked at a moment ago. Now I'm curious to see why this is specific to Gigabyte. I might actually need to read the manual on this one. I can't see anywhere where that goes. So uh, we'll come back to that one maybe a little bit later on. So that says five volt DG on there. So I don't know whether that connects to the motherboard or not. I don't know, best to look in the manual and I will look into that. Uh, later on when we connect it to this board because we do have a gigabyte motherboard in this computer so uh, We'll be checking that one out now the other cable that comes with it Quickly just undo this I Don't want to spend too much time on the cables. We want to see the glorious RGB that these things produce Now this is the one I was thinking of this will plug into That there this is for this is the one I'm hoping we can use in this case the four pin header will plug into that uh, the other way around such like there we go and then this is the cable that will plug into the mother the rgb header on your motherboard and it's also got a power connector there uh, i think that's power no that's fan head sorry fan header as well and your five volt argb connection now you can you can use one so if you've got a tiny mini or micro atx or mini ITX motherboard that only has one ARGB header, you can connect that to it and control all the fans from the one port, which is great if you're limited on RGB connections. Uh, also, likewise for fans as well, that will connect to the PWM port on your fans, although I've only just noticed actually that there's three pins on that PWM header there that connects to the motherboard, but PWM normally requires four pins so I'll be curious to see how that one works out anyway that's what comes with it and uh, that is basically how you would plug it in you plug your power into one end you plug that into there plug that into your motherboard and that you can then control the software once you configured it using whatever software you want to use you can configure your fans so the fans themselves let's just uh, move these out of the way because there's quite a lot of fans here now, if you can get a close up of the fans, they've got quite a, a different style of blade that we can see here. Now we have already had these on and we'll do a noise test in a bit. They've got, they're, they're not flat like your normal fans that I've seen before. So, uh, and the thermal tape fans that we've had years ago, uh, they're, just, they're just different. I think they look quite cool. They look, they remind me more of uh, kind of a jet engine type fan blade style here is what I see going on here. Now, I don't know whether this has any impact on noise or if it improves airflow, but we'll, we'll find that out later on. But I think that looks quite cool. So what we've got here is the white fan. Obviously, these are 120, if you haven't already noticed that. They're 120 mil uh, fans. And uh, it's nice to see that they haven't plastered, although they've got their logo on the outside there. It's not too intrusive. So when it's put in the case, actually, 
you're not going to see that because one it's going to be spinning it's going to be blurred out but what i don't like on some fans is they put uh, a, a big logo in the middle and it just looks like this blurry mess in the middle and it kind of it's kind of annoying what i would have liked to have seen though is a white sticker on these fans considering they're white fans not a black one so i don't know quite what the thinking there was but it could have been a white sticker with black writing on it i think that would have looked a lot better but that's uh that's not something you know you can take the sticker off if you wanted to do that uh it also comes with uh rubber grommets on each of the places where you screw it into your case so eight in total uh these are pre-applied so you don't need to go and stick these on like you do with say noctua fans or, or other makes of fans as well they're already applied um they seem to be quite well stuck on there so i don't think they're going to come off very easily but once you've got them screwed onto your case I don't see that being an issue either anyway so we've got with regards to led now we will plug this in in a moment we've got this ring around the outside that will light up and then we've got a ring in the middle that will light up all right so those of you that are more interested in the rgb it has eight leds within this center the fan blade part of the uh, fan itself and then this strip around the outside has 15 LEDs. Now, let me tell you, that doesn't sound a lot compared to some fans, but with the diffusion that they've got going on uh, around the outside and in the middle, because you can see it's kind of misty, it's not very clear, so that that really gives the LEDs a bit of uh, bit of blur and, well, diffusion, basically, is what we call it, diffusion. It makes the, the, the colors blend in, so it makes them nice and smooth. So uh, we've got that as well. And then on the back side, of the fan uh, not really much to report you've got the easy DIY fab logo there again black sticker would have been cool to have maybe a white sticker on there as well more rubber grommets on the back now if you've got your fans depending on which way the obviously the air is flowing uh, that way it will flow through that way and it will come out that side so where you if you have these in the front of your case and you'll see that later on in the video then obviously you're going to see this side so I mean you've got choices you can take the sticker off if you don't want a black sticker on there, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but if you're worried about not being able to see the RGB here, then there is a tiny little strip around the outside that you can still see the RGB through, and I'll show you that in a minute when we plug it in. And obviously you're gonna see the fan going through there as well. So I think it's about time that we get this plugged in. We do a little bit of basic airflow testing using some smoke, if we can uh, find something to create some smoke. And then, um, well, we'll get it fitted in the case so you can see what it looks like in all its glory and see how good these look. All right, so before we show you a quick demo of a uh, basic demo of airflow for these fans, uh, let's just show you what the RGB looks like. So here is the RGB. Now it's going to glare on camera because the camera is trying to compensate for the bright lights on these things. Now I've got to say they are extremely bright. They're going to look brighter on the camera. I know that, but this kind of gives you an idea and I'm going to go through some of the modes that are built into the actual controller itself so if I just change the RGB mode on that so you can see some of the modes if you don't have a motherboard that supports RGB sync these are some of the modes that you can kind of expect now I'm not going to go through all of them because there are 50 RGB modes yes you heard me right that's 50 50 RGB modes on the controller without using your motherboard. That's a crazy amount of ARGB goodness there. Uh, so it's gonna take you a while to go through, well, it won't take you a while to go through it, but it will take, take you a while to pick which one you like the look of. So let's just quickly go through some of these. You've got a rotating one there, that's pretty cool. Uh, but at the end of the day, it depends on the aesthetics of your build. Yeah, there's just loads, loads, loads and loads of different RGB modes to go through. You could spend all day going through these modes. And that one's quite a nice one. That shows all the different colors. But nice and smooth. Uh, until you go uh, and change the RGB speed using the controller. Now it goes a little bit. That It's not so smooth once you start slowing down the motion of the RGB there. But I mean, it still looks all right. That's still pretty cool. Now you can see you've got a different color on the outside to what you've got on the inside. Uh, we couldn't actually tell at first whether the inside colors were different to the outside. And, um, but looking here, you can clearly see that the colors are actually different to what's going on on the outside 
of the fan there as we slow it down. So if we show it at a different angle, if we show it on the side, this is what it's gonna look like on the side. And you'll see it in the case in a minute anyway, when we put it in, but you still get that RGB goodness from the side as well. And then if we turn it round to how it would be if these were front fans, sucking it in from the front of your case, you can see the ring that I was talking about earlier is still visible from this side. So you will still get, as well as the RGB on the inside, a nice little ring around the outside of your fans. And obviously this little bit here. So all in all, I'm actually impressed by how bright these are compared to some I've seen in, in the past. And uh, yeah, I think having all these lit up is gonna make your case pop, that's for sure. Now, I'm gonna be honest with the, with the strength of the construction of these, I'm not gonna squeeze them. They are a little bit flexible. What I tend to do is I just hold the corners of it and I just give it a squeeze. Now, um, I haven't actually done this test on other fans, so I can only do that on these ones because that's the only ones I've got to hand right now. But you can actually squeeze and bend the fans together. You're not going to do that in the real world. Why would you try and squeeze the fans together? It would be a stupid thing to do. But it's just a construction thing that I like to check to see how strong they are. But given that the only thing holding these things together are these here, these uh, pillars here, are, are they're not really pillars, but I call them pillars for today's video. That's all that's holding, that's all that's kind of keeping it all together. It's, it's hardly surprising, but I'd, I guess they've done that to maximize the amount of airflow that's going through this. I think it's, if it's incorrect, I'll put it up on the screen. I think it's 38.5 cubic feet of air per minute that these things will push through, which is, which is good. It's a good amount. And I can feel that. And we'll show you using um, some smoke in a minute and uh, some bits of paper. Very basic testing. We don't have anything more than that to do a proper test, but um, that's what we've got. So that's what we can do. So let's do some uh, airflow tests in a minute. So at the moment, the air is blowing this way. So towards you guys who are watching. And um, what I'm gonna do is, well, we're just gonna hold a bit of paper up. Now, obviously it depends on how thick the bit of paper is that I'm holding up. So I've got a bigger surface area there to try and catch more air. Obviously, this is a very, very basic test, all right? So don't shoot me in the comments. I'm just trying to show you how much airflow is going through it the best I can. All right, so here we go. So you can see there quite clearly it's not moving. Uh, let's do it from the side. It might be a better angle, actually. So here we go. Now, I believe that these fans are currently going about 1600 RPM, give or take 200 RPM is what it says on the website. Now, I think by default, they're maxed out at 1600 RPM. So I will confirm that with the Easy DIY Fab if they are at 1600 by default. But um, you can see there the amount of airflow next to the fan anyway, that is going through there. Now, as we move away, obviously that is going to be less. But even there, you can still see at that distance, there's still a good amount of airflow going through that. I mean, it's not making it go vertical or horizontal or anything like that, but you can clearly see that there is still air moving at quite a distance away from that fan. And so if we go like a, a small case away, say maybe that far away, you can still see there's airflow there. So it's a good amount. I'd say that's pretty good. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna do a similar test, but we're gonna do some smoke. Now this is gonna happen very, 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 very quickly. So I've never done this before, so we'll see what happens. Basically, I'm just gonna blow a candle out and then see how quickly the smoke goes through and see what the suction is like from the other side of the fan. And then you'll see that hopefully, hopefully go through the fan. As I said, this is the first time I've done this. Hopefully smoke comes out of this. I don't know if this is gonna work even, so this may not even end up in the video, but if it does, we'll probably continue doing it for future fans. But here we go, it's just a visual representation of how well this thing sucks air in. So here we go. Hello, something just flew off the table. There's so much air coming through this fan. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, what we need is one of the, I think they're called joss sticks or something like that. Uh, basically you light them and they smell your room. They make your room smell nice. I think what we'll have to do, we'll get some of those for the next test, but hopefully you saw some smoke going through that. And I was about a hand, hand length away from that fan 
and it still managed to suck some of that uh, smoke through the fan. Wasn't complete success that test, but you kind of get the idea of how much suction there is uh, going through that fan. So uh, one more thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the fan. So I'm gonna put the fan there. I'm gonna move my hand further away so that you can kind of see how far away it is until I can not feel any more air, okay? Now, what, then what I'll do is I'll measure that and just give you a kind of measurement of how far it is before there's just no air going through it at all. You can't feel anything. Well, I can't feel anything anyway. Okay, so um, bear with me, but I'm gonna get a tape measure. Uh, found a tape measure. So we're gonna try and do this as scientific as we possibly can. Uh, so here goes, we're gonna try and see how far we can feel the air before it stops you know, pushing air. So, okay, um, this is gonna be a bit interesting, so I'm gonna have to get up. So I can definitely feel it there. Now I might need your assistance. Uh, so I can definitely feel it there. And we're at 30 centimeters away now. So we're gonna to go to 50. That's 50 centimeters away from the fan. I can still just about feel it there. 50 centimeters away now. I can definitely feel it. And we're gonna go 70. 70 centimeters away from the fan. Now what I could actually do is hold a bit of uh, paper up to give a bit more of a visual reference. You can still see, still see it moving. So there's definitely still air going at 70 centimeters away from the fan. And I can still just about feel that. Well, I mean, you can still see the, that's not me, that's the air. From the fan so we're going to go 100 uh no 90. we're going to go 90 centimeters away from the fan now highly scientific here 90 centimeters away just you can just about see that moving hopefully you can see that on the camera that's so that was 90 centimeters we're going to go 110 now i got a feeling that we're not going to see anything move from this distance away so 110 centimeters away from the fan realistically there is no case this long so you wouldn't need airflow going at that distance but yeah you can barely see it moving now so realistically there's no case that you're going to have that's that long where you'll need air flowing from i don't know if you can even see this in the camera or not flowing from where the fan would be to where we could still just about fill air that's a long amount that's 110 centimeters of uh, airflow, so um, yeah, realistically you wouldn't you wouldn't do that. It's probably thirty centimeters or something like that, which is absolutely uh, good. That's good. So that's a sixteen hundred RPM give or take about two hundred RPM. So I think it's time to get these things put in and uh, see them all light up in all their glory. So uh, let's head on over to the tower and get these things plugged in.
Well, there we have it. Hopefully you can see that and it's not too uh, too glary or anything. It looks it looks really good. I'm impressed with how it with how it all came came together. Um, the lights aren't kind of as you can see the light the pattern of the lights is following uh, a program that's set up for uh, using Signal RGB. If you don't know what Signal RGB is, then uh, we'll put a link in the description down below. It's a free piece of software which also has a subscription to it as well if you want more features, but you can customize all the different things that you can plug into your motherboard and then set up different um, themes and pat you can set up your own patterns and things like that. It's a, a real, uh, it's a good bit of software. Maybe something we can do a, a short little video on just to show you how it all works and stuff like that with this computer here in front of us. But uh, maybe we'll do that in another video. But you can see here where the light isn't kind of going all the way around. So the reason that is because we've now got this plugged into the motherboard, which is piggybacking off of another connection, which we've set up for the Acer Tech uh, cooler that you can see in there. Now this only has, I think, uh, six or eight LEDs on it. And the fans, as we said earlier in the video, have way more than that. So at the moment, it's only doing about half of those LEDs that are on these fans. So that's why you're only seeing like half of them light up. Uh, once that's all configured, then that will look how it's supposed to and go completely all the way around the fan. Now I can see they're really bright and um, in the, there's definitely a lot more airflow in this case than there was previously. Now we've got to configure the fan speeds as well because they're PWM controlled. So at the moment, uh, they're all set to the same speed. The good thing about these being PWM fans is that if we wanted to, forgetting the ARGB connection, we could plug the fans in independently to this motherboard because it does actually have enough fan headers on it and then we can control them in a bit more granularity. So um, that's something we may look into later on, but as it currently stands, it's more than enough for this particular setup. But as it upgrades over time, we may need to uh, tweak that and plug them directly into the motherboard to control the fan speed. The ARGB can still be controlled via the single uh, splitter five volt connection that we've got. So my thoughts on these fans are they're actually, I'm impressed. There's quite a lot of airflow going through these as it stands now and I think they're running at their maximum still. Overall, uh, I think they suit this particular build being as they're white really, really well and I'm impressed with how they, they came about. Now, um, Easy DIY knew that we were making this video and uh, they're actually gonna, gonna help with one of the fans. So hopefully, hopefully them seeing this video will um, we'll just show them how good their own fans look in this type of build and it just suits it really well. We haven't talked about price. These are not the cheapest fans around and I think the RGB is awesome on it. I think the RGB is really good but I think for the price the build quality could have been a bit better. I think the the support struts on the back of the fan could have been a bit stronger. Um, like I said you can squeeze the fan and you can feel it moving in but that's not a normal use case. You wouldn't go and crush your fans. So, uh, but it's just a little test we like to do to see how rigid they actually are. So, I, I mean, there's not really much else to talk about. Their fans, they push air through and they don't market them as high static pressure fans. They're just airflow fans from what I can make out. Um, I did ask them, but they didn't answer me in time for this video. So um, if they've answered after making this video, then I'll, I'll put that in the uh, description down below just so you guys know what type of fans these are. Now, obviously we've got them against a radiator there. We've got them in push-ball configuration. So we'll see how that goes over time and see if they perform well against a radiator. Uh, as it is at the moment, I think it's gonna be fine. But um, time will tell as we start using the system and it starts getting hotter and all those kind of things. But I think that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you loved these fans and if you are keen on getting some yourself, um, if you want to get a free pack, they do also do a free pack and a single pack. Oh, before we go, I didn't tell you the price, did I? So these, we got these off Amazon, we bought these ourselves. These are $47.99. They might be $95. Nearly £50 for five ARGB PWM fans. If you bought one on its own, it's $16.99 for one PWM ARGB fan. 
Now that's not the most expensive fan out there, granted. There are more expensive ones out there, but I think for the, I, th I think the build quality lets it down just a little bit. But like I say, you're not gonna be squishing the fans. Once they're in the case, they're gonna be spinning and they're gonna be doing their job just fine. So build quality aside, they're really good fans for the price. And I uh, hope you enjoyed us showing you these fans. And if you want some yourself, go and check out the links in the video description down below. And thank you very much for watching. We're gonna go and have some fun with this now. We'll see you in the next video. So, hello! Hopefully that works. Anyway, stop recording. Thanks, bye.